Um, and thank you for coming in from Israel, especially for it. Yeah, we, we just wanted to say it's a very surreal experience being here in the middle of uh, what's going on now in Israel and sure. being here, showing this film in these times uh, makes it uh, much more powerful and emotional for us. So yeah. thank you for having us for a little break from everything. <laughs> um, Let's start with Sharon. Both you and your co-director Golan Reyes have a personal connection um, to the story. How were you thinking about making this film for a long time, or what motivated you to to do it? Um, well, both Golan and I are uh, from um, Libya. His grandmother is from there, and my uh, my father and my mother and my grandmother and grandfather are from Libya, uh, Tr Tripoli and Benghazi. Uh, so I have, uh, you know, like you saw in the movie. But I think it uh, it's it's a mo it's a thing that I knew for a very long time since I was a little kid. Um, but you don't really know it. You don't really ask when you are a kid, your grandpa, grandparents, uh, uh, this stuff. Al al although I knew all about it, uh, but I never really stopped to listen. And uh, it was only when uh, my grandfather uh, died, and and then uh, my uncle so uh, revealed his uh, journal. And actually, he revealed a piece of history that um, uh, was never told before, um, and that was very moving for for him and for us as well, because it's the only um, proof proof and uh, evidence that this thing really happened. Because there are many survivors that talk about it, but it's it's the on only oral. But it's the only, you know, uh, document from that piece, from that um, area, so from Giado. So it was very... Uh, and then after we, we heard about it and we he translated a di diary from Italian to, to Hebrew, then the story that was my grandfather's story uh, was passed to my uncle's story and then to, m to me as well. But like you saw, it was all, always in me because my second name is Ada, and I knew that. Um, and I just want it. It was only waiting to be revealed. So, <laughs> and ha have you thought about publishing the journal, the whole journal? Actually, my uncle did that. Yeah, there is a book uh, with that translation. Yes. Um, w when did you develop the form of the film, and like, at what point were those gorgeous animations created and the models? Please walk us through the different elements. So when Sharon uh, called me at first, uh, when uh, Sharon and Golan were thinking about uh, the movie, uh, we realized we have no visual source of any kind, no videos, no, no pictures, no nothing. The only thing we had was the the, the journal and uh, the memories of the survivors. So we decided to create this uh, this camp from only based on memories. And we have we had uh, a one black and white picture that we are still not sure if it's real or not. Uh, what do you mean? We don't know. So there is a picture in the book actually. Uh, and, uh, very blurry. Very and, uh, blurry. We can see the footage here. Um, so we based it mostly on uh, on memories of the survivors, um, and then the animation uh, part, who was beautifully uh, drawn by Adi Gershon, the artist, and animated by Ran Jorgensen, the animator. Um, we we. <laughs> Yeah, they made yes, wonderful. They made, yeah, um, we so the the base was again the ink in the journal. We wanted to um, use the the um, the feeling that we had when we first saw it. It was partially um, completely erased. Some pages we needed to recreate. 
reprint it, and the, the journal was our um, main uh, source. We also, it was very important for us to use the, the, the combination um, of the journal in the camp, uh, in some um, scenes, um, as a part as our, you know, desire to live again. Yeah, we really wanted people to feel that he actually sat there and wrote in this little cab and he sat there and wrote. So I think this solution was really beautiful because the the writing through on the walls and like the, like in the sand and it it was really beautiful used. And another thing is we kept it with no face. Uh, so there, there are no faces and uh, we kept it very symbolic, the camp. So everybody can, you know, um, feel it, and at the screening at the Jerusalem Film Festival, we had Allegra, and she is 96, uh, I think she is the, the oldest survivor, and she stood up after the screening and she said, I was there! It was so funny because she, you know, for the first time she saw a footage of, uh, of the camp, so it was very moving for us. Oh, it must have been. Um, yeah, I, I was actually going to say it, the, the writing really makes you picture a person writing. And, um, but part of it is also the sound design, I think, which is wonderful. Can you talk about that? The sound design? Yes. Wow. Well, like Arit said, also in the um, video and the sound, we had nothing. We had something to create. We had to rewrite and re recreate the... Um, uh, the 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 camp and recreate the sounds that we imagined that was there and be because there was no um, people we decided that well there won't be any mi mi miniature figures or stuff like that yeah so um, we based it really on the um, I, I remember when I, we talked to, with the sound man, um, um, the sound designer, I told him I wanted a, how the sun sounds like because it's, it's a sunny uh, place. It's not like the Eastern Europe, um, like what, what you know about Holocaust in Eastern Europe. It doesn't sound like that and doesn't feel like that. It's, it doesn't snow. Uh, it's, it has a very different sound, and we really wanted the sound of a desert, a sound of a place that there is nothing in it, a sound of the sand, a sound of the, of the, of the sun. Mm. <laughs> so we tried. Yeah, it, it definitely comes across. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think that this topic, it's very eye-opening um, and very underexplored. Um, what have the reactions been? I guess you showed it at the Jerusalem Film Festival. You've shown it elsewhere. What kind of responses have you gotten? I think it's um, basically, I think that people in Israel don't know about this, uh, this uh, story. They didn't know, I didn't know about the uh, uh, Holocaust in the desert. So, People are amazed by it. I think um, in the Jerusalem Film Festival, we had a couple of screenings and the entire community was there. So her uncle and the survivors. And I think it kind of, you know, it made a closure. Uh, it's the first time they, you know, their story being told on screen. It's going to be broadcast on television as well. So the reactions are amazing and very, very moving, you know. We had people coming over after the screening, telling us, you know, other stories. And, you know, we met a lot of people that uh, we didn't talk to uh, during the making of the movie. And so it goes on and on. It's just, a, I think, it's just the beginning. Yeah. Um, can you talk a bit about the archival elements, the, the interviews, um, how you found them, if you knew that they existed? Um, yeah, we knew. Um, like 
I was an editor for 25 years before I was a director and I edited a lot of uh, Holocaust movies. So I knew every frame <laughs> of uh, the Holocaust material from, uh, from uh, Europe. Um, and I knew about all the survivors and yeah, we searched for people who talked and there were people who talked, not many, uh, but there were and I think each and every one of them are, is here, maybe uh, even in sound or uh, visual as well. Um, and we heard all their stories, but it's, and it really combined together to a, a whole story. Um, and they told the same stories. It, it was amazing um, because they were, what, 2,000, 3,000 3, people uh, there. And I really searched for my grandfather's name. Uh, and when I found it, it was so <laughs> moving when, it, when it, I found the, the, uh, the person who talked about uh, the show that they made there, there and about the little girl and how uh, he was with her. Wow, it was very moving to discover that. Yeah, I wanted to add that uh, about the footage, the archival footage that Sharon knew to recognize uh, footage being shot in Germany or in Poland. It was, you know, we were searching for, for footage. It was almost impossible to find any. So the shots that are in the movie are basically, I think, m most of them. And, and where, what archive are they from? Oh. Um, the, where are they from? Yeah. The archive from Germany? Uh, okay, I see. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, your mother's wonderful. Yeah, my mother is wonderful and a piece of work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you talk at all about... Um, yeah, it, it's such a natural reluctance to, to want to face these things. Yeah. Uh, it really humanizes the story so much. Um, so I'm sure it wasn't easy, but thank you for convincing her to <laughs> participate in the She's film. She's not happy about it. Oh, no, I'm sorry. But no, 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 it's fine. Please thank her for, <laughs> for from uh, us. Um, yeah, my, my mother was at a screening, and she hated the movie. <laughs> Um, but it's fine because there is a th thing in my family. You don't want to do something, but you do it because your family, you, you are asked to, and that's it. it it's it's uh, it's enough. And like she says, um, I didn't want to be here, but you asked me, so I'm doing it. That's it. Uh, it's and um, I think there there was a process uh, and a journey with her and for myself as well, um, because I really wanted her to speak and to, I, I really, when I um, confronted my uncle and her with, with the denial of the country, and I thought it was um, also because they denied their, themselves the Holocaust, they erased it, them, it themselves. And uh, I really wanted them to speak out and to say, yes, I was there. Yes, I was a victim. But it, it was very hard for them to do that, uh, both my uncle and my mother. Um, and I was very furious about it and I wanted them to talk and stuff like that. But then I think at the end, when, I, when we, saw, when we um, saw my grandmother and then when, when she says, I wanted it to be uh, outside my home. I wanted it. To, I wanted my family to be happy, to be good. I didn't want my sorrow to be uh, in the house. So I thought, well, I, I can, I, I can relate to that. I can understand that. It was very moving for me. So I went through a journey myself to uh, in this movie. Yeah, I thought that was a beautiful thing to use. I guess it was home movie footage um, to really let us see a joyous moment of the family. Yeah, yeah that, that's my, that's my uh, <laughs> a piece of my life. Um, um, 
in Pesach and in uh, all the hol- holidays, all that fun and the... Um, that I watched as a little girl, all the all my uncles, and I watched them, and I was very moved by it. Um, yeah. Good. Well, thank you both thank so you. much thank for you being so much, here. Everybody. Thank, thank you for, you for coming. Thank you.